we're going to do something a little different today. You know, I didn't want to just hit you up with doom and gloom all the time. I actually wanted to give you some solutions and some ideas that I've come across. I'm not a doctor or anything like that. So you definitely want to get with your medical practitioner uh, with any ideas that I give you. But uh, I think it's well worth looking into how we can protect our bodies from the continuous fallout that we're getting. The big concern really is our food, our water, and our air. And I'm going to go over each way how we can minimize what's going into our bodies, the radioactive isotopes, and how we can protect our body. Uh, the very first thing is where does your produce come from? And I know here in the United States it's become very hard to figure out the origin of your food. And just recently, the United States, through a treaty with Canada and Mexico, now I'll say from America, and it could be from three countries, Mexico, the United States, or Canada. Well, that's very important. How I look at it is there should be a zip code on your food so you know from the exact farm. You could Google map it and find out exactly where your food came from. If we had sane people in charge of our country, that's how it would be. What if you type into your food, oh crap, this farm is right next to a nuclear plant. Bingo, bad idea. Matter of fact, I was in the grocery store today and I was looking in the organic food section of all places and I came across these apples and there was a picture of this pretty girl in the apple. It looked very pure, right? But it's from Wichita, Washington. And if you look on a map, Wichita, Washington, it's right near Hanford. And these are apples are in the major grocery store Publix. So there's probably lots of products just like that that we're buying and we don't even know. I read every freaking label. If I don't understand what's on that label, I'm probably not going to buy it. And I think that's a great idea. It's very something simple we can do. We don't understand what's on the label. Let's not buy it. Obviously, I hope by now that you're not eating fish, especially if it's from the Pacific Ocean. Maybe in the Atlantic you can get away with it. Although me, I'm not touching anything from the ocean anymore. I think, hey, 70 years of nuclear contamination in the ocean is long enough where there could be built up there. I don't care where your spirulina came from. If it came from Iceland, I'm still not going to touch it. If it came from South Africa Ocean or the Antarctic, I still don't think it's clean. And I'm not going to trust it. And I know a lot of people, they, they want to take spirulina and they want to take kelp. I highly recommend not to do that. Uh, because it's most likely they probably already absorb those contaminations already. So if you're looking for a great alternative spirulina, look into chlorilla. Chlorilla uh, is a fresh water plant. And I do know of one source only that I know of that will be cleaner than any other source. And it's actually an ingrown, an indoor grown chlorilla from Korea. So you can find that where the conditions are controlled, where they're clean, the water's very clean, it gets artificial sunlight. And I take about three of these uh, chlorea tabs a day. They taste pretty good to me. Uh, that's a great way to take out some of the radioactive particles in your gut. Uh, the gut is it does a very good job of removing harmful substances from the body, radiation included. But the problem with radiation is that it mimics so many other isotopes. I mean, it's well known that cesium mimics iodine. So you want to be taking potassium iodine. But you want to be careful how much you're taking. Me, I, I try to go easy on that. I'll only take about a quarter of a tab uh, per day. And you can also do that to clean up your water as well. You can take a little piece, put it in a gallon jug, and drink it like that. But you, you don't want to take too much of that. Like I said, I'm not a doctor, so if you have any problems with your thyroid, consult with your medical practitioner first. Another big one, because people love their cheese. People love pizza. People love their milk. People love their ice cream. You know, if you're a big milk person, big cow milk person, you got to watch out for the strontium that's probably in your milk. And there's a list of companies where some are higher, some are lower. You, you want to piece the puzzle together where your milk is coming from. Because if you know where your milk is coming from and lay 
a map of where your milk is coming from to where a nuclear reactor is. You want it to be far away from possible. That's how you can source your milk. And another thing you can do before you take your ice cream, take a little tab of calcium magnesium because strontium 90 mimics calcium. So if you take a calcium magnesium tablet right beforehand, your body won't absorb so much of the strontium 90. Now get this, plutonium mimics iron. A good way to get iron is from beets. See if you can get some organic beets. If not, you can go to a, some health food stores and look for, uh, you can actually get little tablets that taste like a beet and it's it's high in iron. So I think I think that's a good thing you could take. Another thing to look out for, so many products contain it is carrageenan. Carrageenan is in yogurts. It's a thickener. And carrageenan is a seaweed, so it's coming from the ocean. And even even if it didn't contain radiation, it's very harmful to the body, causing inflammation in your body. So even if your carrageenan was to come from Antarctica, let's just say, I still wouldn't take something like carrageenan. And you got to be very tricky because you could be thinking you're doing all the right steps and you might be getting a milk. I think it's an almond milk called Blue Diamond. Blue Diamond has got carrageenan in their almond milk. So I'm staying away from carrageenan. I think that would be a good idea to stay away from because I'm thinking, hey, if it's a seaweed, there could be some contamination in that seaweed. So carrageenan is a big no-no. Ultimately, the the best step you could probably do is having a greenhouse. It's it's a good long-term goal that even if you got a little space or property, hey, why not turn that into a little indoor garden, make it a greenhouse? You could probably get it done with a couple hundred bucks. Uh, cause I know there's a lot of people that hey, they love tea, right? You love your green tea, your black tea. Well, where is most of the tea coming from? Japan and China. And when you look at China, their problem is about 80% of the rivers are heavily contaminated where they can't even drink the water. The, the, the air is so contaminated, they got smog signal alerts where people have to stay indoors. So you, they're finding a lot of aluminum, a lot of byproducts from factories just alone in that tea. And I, I don't think it's a great idea. So why not have a tea bush? Have your own tea in, your, in, your, in, in like a little garden and you're controlling the water conditions and you have it like set up in a greenhouse. I think that would be a great idea. So I just wanted to get back to fish. Right? You know, with little over a half an acre, you could just with a half an acre, you could make a fish farm that could make over $10,000 a month. Now imagine when when people, the mainstream, finally catches on that their fish is radioactive. What do you think the price of fish is going to be that does not have radiation? It's going to be through the freaking roof. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because once people start really catching on, this food from South America is going to go through the roof. So if you prepare now and you have a, your own fish farm, you're going to make a freaking killing. And your neighbors, you're going to sell so much, it's going to be unbelievable once the mainstream catches on. So I think that's another thing, to good thing to invest into. Ultimately, and I know it's going to be hard for some people, is but you want to be more of a vegetarian. Because when you're an apex predator, you're on top of that pyramid, that bioaccumulation of radiation and other toxicities from, from factories, it's going to be there. So... You want to cut back on your meat if you can. If you are going to buy meat, try to get your meat from, from South America. Uh, there's some great Argentinian beef still. So that, that would be a better idea if you love your meat. But ultimately, you want to see if you can cut back. So try to cut back. Uh, there's a lot of, if, you, if you're wondering, ah, oh, these vegetables, they taste bad. There's no flavor. If you look into uh, Indian recipes, oh my god, there's so much flavor. You can flavor up some veggies in a hurry and it'll taste awesome. So I, w I would look into that. I'm curious. I mean, I would love it if some of us got together and we picked out some of our favorite products. And if we could actually uh, group source maybe and find a laboratory 
where we could investigate maybe with a spectrometer how much radiation is in some of our favorite products. Um, for example, I'm curious about eggs. I'm really curious about eggs um, because we know uh, what happened with DDT. They said it was safe. They started spraying it around and they started finding out that huge concentrations of DDT was found in the eggs. So I'm kind of curious if, if the same thing is happening with radiation in the shell. You want to make sure that your body is in prime condition. When your body is flowing good, you got your your bowel system good. If you're doing if you've done colon cleanses within the last year, that's great. There's a kidney cleanse you can do. It's very important too when you take these supplements that your body is working properly because you don't want it to get stuffed up. There's some things you can do there. You can do some fasting, uh, drink lots of distilled water. Water is very important. And that might be the most important thing of all is your, is your water source. Some people got wells and that's great, but you want to, before drinking that water, is, and run it through a really good system. I don't, I don't think a carbon system by itself is good enough. And a matter of fact, there's, you know, nothing can really remove tritium. So nobody out there that could remove tritium, but I don't see it. I've, I've, I've heard research that they can do something with some type of beads made out of silica, but I doubt it. To me, it doesn't look very conclusive. But uh, you want at least, I would say, with reverse osmosis, you're going to get your parts per million should be down to about 10 parts per million. When you're getting distilled, you're actually getting it to zero. I think that's the best you can do, really, is zero. If you're not going to do distilled, at least make sure it's reverse osmosis. Uh, any Anything else, I don't know about. I've seen that zero water pitcher. I mean, if you don't have nothing, definitely get the zero water pitcher before the Brita pitcher. I think the Brita only will remove about 35% of the radiation, while the, at least the zero pitcher, you only need to get about 16 gallons out of that filter, but you'll probably remove about 99%. So 99 is a lot better than 35%. And I know a lot of people, you know, they also, in their water supply, there's fluoride there's tons of fluoride and that's terrible you know when i distill my water i always look at the bottom and you can smell the fluoride it's disgusting you'll see like a spoonful of it in every gallon and i've actually talked to one of the guys that works in one of these uh water companies and he, he has to wear a mask he has to wear gloves <laughs> he, he has to wear protective equipment that, that that what they're putting into our water so that, that tells you the whole story right there so I felt my mind so much more clear once I started distilling the water. And I think that's a great idea. I think everybody should get a PPM meter. You can find one on Amazon for like $20. It'll tell you the parts per million in your water. So if you're going anywhere, you can start t testing your bottle of water. You can start testing the water at your store. And uh, that's another thing that I scale back on. I, I don't eat out as much because I don't freaking trust people with my food. And I'm sure there's a lot of people listening to this right now. They don't freaking trust the people making their own food. I don't. I'm sorry. If I go to a place I can't look in your kitchen, I'm out of there. So, and I'm telling you right now, when you get that, that Starbucks coffee, they're probably getting the water right from the tap. And there was even, it might have been in China, a Starbucks in China. They were taking water from the bathroom that was next to a toilet and they were actually uh making their coffee drinks with that go figure so also too you order rice they're cooking that rice and tap water please i mean i i barely eat out unless i know the place is like on the up and up when it comes to their water because let's just face it these these these, these businesses they're out to make money and if people really their food still tastes good they're not really caring about a water filter speaking about rice rice is not one of the grains i think is so good but since rice is grown in water it's probably not a good idea and especially now because all this rice is getting turned down in other countries where does it go it goes to the united states that's right so there's actually Fukushima rice in the United States market. There's Japanese rice all over the market. And I just did a video, I think, out of all the countries that won the most awards for quality was Japan and their food. 
and I just find that incredibly ironic so and there's also if you love your rice you gotta have your rice I'm gonna flip the script on you I'm gonna tell you white rice is better than brown rice now you're probably thinking I'm totally crazy for saying that about 35 percent of the radiation in rice can be taken out by taking move the outer coating that brand and that's the brown rice so I, I, I think brown rice is going to be more contaminated than white rice and if you get your rice there's got to be a food origin on that if there's no origin on that I wouldn't get it if you're looking for a great alternative to rice look into quinoa wow quinoa is so much more healthier than rice it's got more protein vitamins and minerals and the best thing about the quinoa is it's probably going to be from Peru or Bolivia and the contamination down there as far as radioactivity is going to be a lot less than the United States. So look into quinoa. Quinoa is great. I'm going to give you another good one that I've been taking and you probably already take it yourself. Is chia seeds. Oh my god. Chia seeds are awesome. I mean they can absorb about 10 to 20 times their own weight. And you can take some chia. Add it to like lemon juice or acai. And you just let the chia seeds absorb for about 30 minutes. And they'll they'll blow up and they taste very good. They get they expand they get a lot bigger, and when they go through your gut, they're gonna also pick up some some of the bad nasties and take those out of your body. So it's good for your stomach as well. Another thing too is, you want to be soaking your produce to at least get rid of any external contamination. I use a lot of baking soda. Oh, we fly through baking soda. It's sodium bicarbonate. Don't get the baking powder because. The baking powder has aluminum. Get the baking soda. Usually, just make sure it says just sodium bicarbonate. And I'll soak uh, vegetables, lettuce, even strawberries. I'll, I'll soak them in the baking soda with vinegar. If you combine baking soda and vinegar together, you're going to see some type of bubbling reaction. It cleans unbelievably well. Believe it or not, you can actually bathe in this yourself, that combination, and it cleans very well. Uh, great for your skin. Uh, great. Uh, it will actually detox your body while you lay in there. I like to detox really. I'll use vinegar, baking soda, and Epsom salt combination when I take a bath, and it's uh, you feel much better after that. Your your skin absorbs a lot of that, and it will help in that cleansing process. And also saunas are great if you can sweat in the sauna. That's awesome. Sweating in steam rooms, that's going to help uh, when you know get out those bad nasties as well through your skin. Let's talk about the air, because air is a big one. Your gut, it can handle a lot of the bad stuff, but your lungs, it's a whole new ball game. Now, if, you, you, if you're sick and you're coughing or you feel like you got a little mucus, be sure to spit it out, because that, that's probably your body trying to get rid of the bad stuff in there. So it's possible your mucus could have picked up some of those radioactive particles that are down in through your esophagus to help you take out that stuff from your lungs. So that's very good. So... Uh, any type of breathing treatment you can do to get rid of some of that mucus stuff, that's probably a good idea. I've even made my own mask for going outside, call me crazy, but I, I have made my own. I'll probably post up another video about how I did that later. Uh, but hey, if you, if you know it's a radioactive day, it's above normal for where it usually is, it's probably not a, you know, to, to limit your exposure outside I think is good. And it's, it's ironic, it's crazy, but these companies like General Electric and Honeywell that pollute our oceans and our air, they're also making some of the equipment to protect you. It's kind of like, let's cause, let's cause the problem and then create something to fix the problem. So that, that's how they make money on you both ways. And then the healthcare industry makes money on you as well, but you getting sick. So ultimately, we want to avoid all that. Now, I've noticed Honeywell, believe it or not, they make a pretty good air filter, uh, HEPA filter. I think everybody should have a HEPA filter in their house. Uh, ultimately, you want to have a HEPA filter where you're sleeping at night. I think that's very important and because uh, HEPAs, they'll remove a lot of particles. I can't guarantee you they're going to remove everything, but they're probably going to remove about 95, 98% of the bad particles that are around you. So, yeah, I would definitely be cleaning out your car a lot as well. From your car, you're going to be tracking in a lot of that with your feet from the outside. 
so you want to make sure that you're cleaning your car and the inside very well and that goes also you want to treat your house uh, your sleeping quarters especially as the number one cleanest area in your house so vacuuming constantly cleaning the 